OpenAI is starting a catastrophic risk preparedness team. Let's find out what that means. Welcome back to The Breakdown. There is a lot, and I mean a lot of discourse right now around questions of AI safety and AI risk in general, but specifically catastrophic risk in AI, real human extinction level risk. The reason for that is a couple parts. One, it's just the culmination of a narrative which has been coming up all year. You've seen a steady beat of scientists and academics and some people from industry saying that these are issues that we really need to take seriously, that we really need to think about. Another part of that is that it's coinciding with a growing policy conversation. Governments around the world are figuring out how they are going to handle the full spectrum of risks from AI, as well as take advantage of it and leave their populations in the best possible place. And most sees its advantages to help their populations. Now, along those efforts, next week we are getting the UK's much ballyhooed and much discussed AI Safety Summit. This has been in the news for a variety of reasons. One, because the UK Prime Minister's office has been really putting emphasis on this and making it a big political issue. Two, because there is intrigue and controversy around it. One of the decisions that Rishi Sunak's government made was to invite and include China in the proceedings. That apparently angered allies, especially the United States, who has taken a very it's us against them approach when it comes to China and AI. That has obviously been embodied in the extension of an increase in export restrictions around AI chips, including cutting off loopholes that China was using to get around the export restrictions that were put into place last year at this time. So this event is coming up next week. It's happening right at the beginning of November. And around that, it seems like both governments and labs are positioning themselves vis-a-vis -vis this type of issue. We talked yesterday about how the White House is planning to release their executive order on AI on Monday, and OpenAI has also just announced a new initiative around this, which is directly focused on these catastrophic misuses of AI. So, in a blog post called Frontier Risk and Preparedness, OpenAI announced their preparedness team and the preparedness challenge. The company writes, As part of our mission of building safe AGI, we take seriously the full spectrum of safety risks related to AI, from the systems we have today to the furthest reaches of superintelligence. In July, we joined other leading AI labs in making a set of voluntary commitments to promote safety, security, and trust in AI. These commitments encompassed a range of risk areas, centrally including the frontier risks that are the focus of the UK AI Safety Summit. As part of our contributions to the summit, we have detailed our progress on frontier safety, including work within the scope of our voluntary commitments. Now, we will come back to exactly what they said and what they reported in that in just a moment. But OpenAI continues that when it comes to catastrophic risks from frontier AI, there are a set of questions that society needs to answer. One, how dangerous are frontier AI systems when put to misuse? Two, how can we build a robust framework for monitoring, evaluation, prediction, and protection against these problems? Three, if our frontier AI model weights were stolen, how might malicious actors choose to leverage them? Because these questions need answers, OpenAI is now convening this preparedness team. They write that the team will connect capability assessment, evaluations, and internal red teaming for frontier models, from the models we develop in the near future to those with AGI-level capabilities. As a little aside, they are clearly saying that we are not developing AGI-level AI just yet. They go on, the team will help track, evaluate, forecast, and protect against catastrophic risks spanning multiple categories including individualized persuasion, cybersecurity, chemical, biological, radiology, and nuclear threats, autonomous replication, and adaptation. Now, that first category, individualized persuasion, is interesting. Given a tweet the other day from OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, who wrote, I expect AI to be capable of superhuman persuasion well before it is superhuman at general intelligence, which may lead to some very strange outcomes. Okay, so coming back to this preparedness team, they're helping track, evaluate, forecast, and protect against these risks. But I think it's clearly that last one that we're most interested in, right? How do you actually help protect against it? One of the specific things is that they're developing what they're calling a risk-informed development policy. This, they say, will, quote, detail our approach to developing rigorous frontier model capability evaluations and monitoring, creating a spectrum of protective actions, and establishing a governance structure for accountability and oversight across the developmental process. Basically, to me, this reads like the mandate of the preparedness team vis-a-vis -vis this risk-informed development policy is to actually integrate how the company deals with these risks to the actual development and deployment process. In other words, rather than having it be totally disconnected or something that you just look at once the model is ready to go, it seems at least they're giving the indications 
that this preparedness team will actually integrate those questions into the process of how OpenAI works in general. If that's the case, and certainly I could be optimistically reading into it, that I think would be a huge and meaningful development. One of the big concerns that many have pointed out, including a piece that we will read for Long Reads this weekend, is that there is an incredible disparity between the amount of money and just the general resources being spent to add capabilities to AI as opposed to align and minimize risks of AI. If that becomes a more integrated process within OpenAI, and especially if that sets a template and a model that others can follow, or even that governments mandate others follow, that could be a meaningful change to how the industry is evolving. So as part of this launch, they also announced their AI preparedness challenge. They say to identify less obvious areas of concern and build the team, we're offering 25,000 in API credits to up to 10 submissions on catastrophic misuse prevention. This is now available on the website. There's a preparedness challenge. It's just openai.com slash form slash preparedness dash challenge. And if you're interested, there's not a lot of words. You give them your name and your LinkedIn. And then basically you have around 600 words total, along with a three-page max PDF to explain a particular misuse you're concerned about, why it might lead to catastrophic harm, and a plan for how to actually deal with it. I'll include a link to this in the notes so that if any of you have these ideas or want to get involved with this team, you have easy access to it. Now, as I mentioned, OpenAI said that as part of this announcement, they were also sharing an update around the UK AI Safety Summit on their approach to frontier risk. This is sort of building off those voluntary commitments that came earlier in the summer. So what have they done around those commitments? Well, they say when they launched Dolly 3, which is their first major public release of a new frontier model within the scope of those voluntary commitments, they quote, did critical safety work, including pre-deployment safety evaluation and red teaming. In addition, they say, we are working towards new methods to empower people to track the provenance of AI-generated media and, quote, have continued to invest in responsible practices through our rollout of voice and image analysis capabilities in ChatGBT, although they don't say what those responsible practices are. They also said that they've met their voluntary commitment to, quote, establish or join a forum or mechanism through which we can develop, advance, and adopt shared standards and best practices for frontier AI safety. That is the Frontier Model Forum which we discussed the other day as it just got itself its first executive director. Still, it's quite clear that when it comes to what they think is significant here, it really is this risk-informed development policy. The vast majority of this blog post is in fact spent on that policy. They basically expand upon what they said before, that the RDP will detail their approach to evaluations and monitoring, as well as establishing a governance structure, and that it will provide for a spectrum of actions to protect against catastrophic outcomes. Now, they do note that this is meant to extend their existing work, including the work of their safety systems team to conduct research, their super alignment team, which has this moonshot mandate of aligning super intelligent AI systems with human intent in the next three and a half years now. And they also discuss a joint deployment safety board with Microsoft, which they say, quote, approves decisions by either party to deploy models above a certain capability threshold. The DSB focuses specifically on deployment decisions rather than on earlier steps, such as deciding whether or not to train models of a certain scalar capability level. Now, another part of this note talks about just how much of a scientific challenge alignment really is. They put it really bluntly. Our current techniques for aligning AI, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback, rely on human ability to supervise AI. But these techniques will not work for superintelligence because humans will be unable to reliably supervise AI systems much smarter than us. Now, I will also share a link to this because there is some really interesting information about how their model evaluations and red teaming work. There's also an acronym that they're using a lot, which is CBRN, which refers to chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear uses and risks of use of AI. And I think if you take anything away from this write-up and from the preparedness team announcement, it's that while there isn't a substitute for real actions, the presence of this larger conversation around AI risks is having an impact in how people are thinking about their development. There is quite clearly serious effort being put into this. Now, we can argue about whether there is enough and about whether that effort needs to be matched by resources in terms of both money and compute, but this certainly looks different than the conversation did even just six months ago. Now, two other sort of related announcements heading into the AI Safety Summit next week. The first is that the United Nations has created an advisory body addressing AI governance. This was announced yesterday by the Secretary General, and it is a 39-member advisory body that can include tech company executives, government officials, and academics. Said Secretary General Antonio Guterres, The transformative potential of AI for good is difficult even to grasp. And without entering into a host of doomsday scenarios, it is already clear that the malicious use of AI could undermine trust in institutions, weaken social cohesion, and threaten democracy itself. So basically, this body is not one that is actually going to have any sort of real governance oversight, but is one which is meant to help make initial recommendations for intergovernmental cooperation around these issues. 
The UN said that the immediate tasks, including building a global scientific consensus on those risks and challenges, and strengthening international cooperation on AI governance. The first meeting of this body is taking place actually today. Lastly, yesterday, of course, the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak had a speech about AI heading into next week's summit, where frankly, a lot of the conversation was around the decision to invite China. But he also announced, as reported by Reuters, that they are setting up the world's first AI safety institute. Sunak said that the institute will, quote, advance the world's knowledge of AI safety and will carefully examine, evaluate, and test new types of AI so that we understand what each new model is capable of, exploring all the risks from social harms like bias and misinformation through to the most extreme risks of all. So like I said, if you are trying to step back and get a sense of what's happening right now, it's that the world is very clearly taking these threats seriously. Fascinatingly, you have people on either side of this question who are upset about this for one reason or another. The accelerationists are, of course, concerned that anything that stands in the way of AI is a failure to realize how beneficial it can be to humanity. And so, of course, they don't want to see open AI slow down because they're worried about these risks. And then on the flip side, you have plenty of people who say either A, it's not enough, and that even more serious commitments are needed, that more government power is needed to exert control on these big AI labs. Or another dimension of that is that we're focusing on the wrong issues, that there's too much time spent on these big future theoretical scenarios and not enough time on the existing problems like biases that show up in LLMs right now. My general take is that if a lot of people on lots of sides of an argument are upset about something that's happening in the middle for different reasons, then it might, might just be the start of a good compromise approach. But of course, this is an extremely dynamic and fast-moving space. We will hear a lot more, I'm sure, about all of this next week with the Safety Summit actually happening. However, for us today, we will wrap it there. I appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.